the main main problem yeah. from the hoodie is they are giving updates very fast and then each and every <laughs> updates are completely different than the previous version and uh, another question i have uh, how people learn where fix in india mainly the speed of the tracking depends on the on how your computer can handle playback in you fact i am also a fan of face tracker uh, not like geo tracker is good enough like this is not normal geometry track Okay so starting with my introduction so hello guys what's up my name is Rajat welcome back to my channel VFX world uh, this is an honor to do a podcast with uh, Roman and Antonio so this is is a great platform to all of you to learn some amazing stuff here and this is a podcast where you can learn so many amazing stuffs with these two amazing legends here so uh, just for the introduction from my side Roman is a founder of this uh, Keen Tools and he's a great man and here is uh, the product manager is Antonio so i just want to give the uh, stage to all of you first start with roman just introduction and yourself introduce yourself for my indian viewers and my vfx world subscribers so starting with you roman uh yeah thank you a lot for having us and uh, actually i was a um composting artist for several years i'd say like 5 or even more 7 years and uh, then i uh switched to my mm, basically um original um education which is software development and computer science and uh, later i started uh, this uh, company which is uh, called kintools and uh, the idea behind it was to bring the latest uh, articles latest state of the art uh, methods in um, computer vision and uh, computer graphics Uh, to production and because i really um, felt like the, every tool that uh, we use is um, has too many um, possibilities to improve and we just took the best from all other software and uh, combined it with state of the art um, science and yeah that's basically how kintools appeared amazing amazing and, uh, great Artem Yes Artem Yeah hello uh well I joined Kintools when it was already like uh, had a good reputation among uh graphics artists in the whole world uh and Roman invited me to take care for product management actually it's with this all start with marketing manager but then slowly uh I kind of shifted to other tasks uh because I was like <laughs> quite easy to take on on different uh areas uh, in our company and yeah but uh yeah um uh, my background was uh, kind of all kinds of arts and software development as well uh so here i kind of feel myself in the right place yeah okay that's 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 mm. it nice so uh, i have few questions in not like questions like my queries and my i think uh, the fans are also excited to learn all these things so very first question from my side to both of you that where the name came from like king tools it's pretty amazing name and pretty unique name so i just really want to know about the meaning of king tool like origin of king tools so roman please elaborate that yeah probably uh, i'm the only one who actually knows the story behind this name uh my uh ex company which uh, was uh like um we actually did um vfx and uh, some color grading and so on for and actually we do uh, advertisement as well and for basically full stack production mm -hmm. um and uh, it was called just kin just kin um, okay just kin and there are several connotations actually because uh, kin in uh, in russian uh, cinema uh, it's just uh, kino so mm -hmm. kin is uh, something similar to kin and at the same time kin is something that we feel like we are all kin on something we kin on uh, doing great stuff we Uh, always uh, learning something we are looking for new uh, 
decision on its own. And that's why we, we thought that this world is, uh, describes us really well. And Kin Tools is just, uh, and actually uh, we already uh, shut down this company before Kin Tools started. Uh, but I like this name and uh, we already have design, which is uh, actually, th th that is always a problem for a new company. So I decided, well, I, I have a name, I have a design. Let's call this company Kin Tools. Kin Tool. Nice, amazing journey. I think the journey was pretty amazing. I, I, I wish that I can see that in front of my eyes live, but no issues. With that. We are using Kin Tools and it's a pretty amazing software. Trust me, I was using this from last one and a half years. It's too good, really too good software. So uh, talking to you, uh, what is your role basically in uh, Kin Tools? Like uh, what do you exactly do uh, here actually? Like what's your role as a product manager? Well, as as a project manager, my like, role is pretty like standard for our product managers. They are like in charge of products. Uh, they kind of decide how what feature we add, what feature we don't add, uh, how the release goes, and whatever. But uh, it's not like I'm just a product manager here. As I saw, as I said before, I like, do many, many, many things. Uh, because we're, we're a t tiny company, uh, we just there's just 10 of us and most people are developers. We have just me uh, in like doing non-developer things. And, and then we have Andrew, you've been talking with him in emails. He's our marketing manager. Uh, and he, we have Roman who also does some development as well currently. But uh, before that, he usually was just uh, kind of uh, he he was the main product manager for a long time, okay. Okay. and now I kind kind of take some uh, things from him so he can focus the on task the vision was more. The task is splitted. Yeah, we have a pretty flat uh, kind of structure, and that that's great. So we we can like shift here and there. Okay, so uh, right now over there is the same thing like in India, there is everything is right now we are work from home, like work from home we're doing for the COVID-19 and all. So over there also the same thing, work from home or everything is normal over there? Uh, yeah, we like, uh, you know, in Russia it's, it's complicated because we have a complicated country, but every country is complicated at this point in the, in our, on our poor plan, planet. But, uh, uh, yeah, we have uh, we don't have like official lockdowns, but uh, they are semi-official. Okay. Uh, so we don't work from office for since the last May was it May or maybe April? Should, I think uh, April. Okay. Yeah, uh, and we work remotely since then, and yeah, but still we like, work as a team. We try try trying as the whole world is trying not to work remotely using exactly. different instruments so we are in the same board nice so uh, my next next question is uh, like the face uh, sorry the keen tools is right now available for a uh, blender and i think for nuke also right any any other platform you guys are thinking about to launch as in keen tool like 3ds max or maya platform or equalizer platform to help with artists more because as as an artist, I'm also an artist, I'm from VFX industry. So uh, I heard from many guys that if Kin Tools will be available for Equalizer or Maya or any other software, then it will be more helpful because in some areas they have some uh, issues to like the, the restrictions, like if I will use Blender or if I use the Nuke, that will be easy, like one click. But when it's come to Equalizer or Maya, it will come pretty hard to handle all of them. So they, they called me that you guys, uh, you know all about like Kin Tools, so you should ask them so this is not my question this is for all vfx community question that when it will be available for many other uh, like software platforms roman well currently we are thinking of uh, after effects um, okay, nice. and uh, also maya okay and um, we have some i'd say um contradictory that's about Maya because uh, we are currently have even a prototype for it, but we are not sure whether 
people really need it in Maya. So please write here in comments if you like the idea, uh, because uh, we really want to talk about it with uh, the actual users. Uh, so we are open to the discussion and uh, we are really digging into it right now. And uh, we are hope to release GeoTracker for Blender uh, fairly soon. And uh, yeah, speaking about new platforms, uh, the one which is most certainly mm -hmm. uh, will be available in near future is After Effects, yeah. Okay, so we're talking about the After Effects, I, I just want to ask you both of you that you know about Element 3D. Well, like I'm a huge fan of Andrew Kramer, sir. So is this possible to any time in future that it will be uh, like merge with Element 3D with Keen Tool Face Tracker or Geo Tracker? Then it will be a become blast if you think about like it will available with Element 3D as a plugin. So what do you think about it? Is it possible in future? I think that uh, the most uh realistic way to uh, integrate them together is just having a button in uh, um, tools like export to element 3d mm -hmm. and you generate the mesh and uh, it's into. already it's uh, available in uh, element 3d i think it's the, the best way of integration probably it could have some mm -hmm. deeper level of integration mm -hmm. but that's uh, the most uh, um, easiest one and the most uh, realistic one in near future, I'd say. So uh, m many times I got some uh, questions regarding Kin Tools that uh, which kind of uh, PC requirements that Kin Tools can exactly work smoothly because when you click that uh, track forward or track backward like analysis and all sometimes when I use my older PC that was lagging. So is there any specific uh, requirement for PC to use Kin Tools Phrase Tracker or Geo Tracker? Is it? Anything? Uh, of course, it's like it depends on like the uh, the video that you have. Like for example, Nuke can like it, it's not a good playback in Nuke. But you don't have like very good uh, smooth playback in Nuke, so you need a lot of resources to play huge files. Uh, so uh, mainly the speed of the tracking depends on the on how your computer can handle playback in you mm -hmm. uh, we of course like yeah, during during the tracking process we add some overhead on that uh, CPU usage but it's like it's minor uh, so I'd say any decent I, I, I do this uh, like I do tracking even on my like laptop from like it's 13 in 13 inch MacBook Pro mm -hmm. and it's uh, even on my old one which was from uh, 2015 uh, it handled that so, but it's not like a production level machine but you, it can handle it it, it, it so, will work like for the normal purpose yeah it will work it's, you can work with that if you don't like load their 8k video yeah. with some DPXs you can work with that but uh, if you if you are working with 8k dpx files then perhaps you know that you need a good machine for that well the, there is a life hack in uh, nuke if you want to have a faster tracking uh, you can click this uh, pause button mm -hmm. uh, in the preview. in preview in, yeah. in in viewer and uh, actually it will be much faster uh, but you you won't be able to see check that the track result. Is proper yes yeah but yeah but at least you you'll be able to see the actual speed of our tracking yes and yes. Uh, so in nuke we are mostly limited with uh, nuke's playback speed so i i don't and use here's yes 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 Continue. here's like uh, maybe just a little bit more advanced hack uh, like continuing the story that Roman told that you can just set up a couple of keyframes yes. here and there like, uh, like first frame like uh, twin frame number 20 frame number 50 uh, and then you can just press the find all button in on our toolbar and then you'll see the because when we when our plugin uh, does refine process it doesn't uh, use playback so you don't see like picture moving but exactly. so but then at this point is you can see the real speed of all tracking and it will happen from all key frames like merge uh tracking data from like forward passes backwards passes and all that and that will be perhaps the better way to track with a with highest possible speed 
Nice, nice. So I, I actually I don't use Blender because I don't know Blender. So I just want to know is the same uh, limitations for Blender also like in Blender also like those who guys are watching from Blender platform. They guys also want to know that the same issues uh, if they face then what they have to do to get some faster render process, faster renders. Well, there is no uh, tracking currently in Blender. Okay. So currently in Blender only face builder is available. Okay. And uh, we actually don't know regarding speed of uh, tracking in uh, in Blender, but uh, currently we are in experimenting with it, and uh, caching uh, of footage in Blender works pretty well. So it means that most likely we'll be able, uh, you'll be able to cache the whole footage, mm -hmm. and uh, it will. Uh, be used uh, during the playback and it will be uh, much faster than a nuke because nuke aggressively uh, recalculate image uh, on every small small change even yes. in uh, zoom in zoom out also uh, yeah exactly so uh, any uh, anything you would th think about like cinema 4d because that is also a big platform and uh, in cinema 4d we do a lot of other stuff like motion graphics and all so i, I and some some sometimes like blender and cinema 4d from my perspective it's almost like similar but there are massive difference but uh, what do you thought about cinema 4d that kin tools will uh, if you, if you add kin tools in cinema 4d that will good for industry i think so uh, and i actually uh, played with it uh, a few months ago Desiree, and uh, I, I have to say that uh, Cinema 4 d has uh, uh, quite good tracking uh, engine uh, already, I mean just for general tracking of the object mm -hmm. and uh, of course not for the facial tracking but uh, yeah it could be a good addition uh, to a cinema for the uh, we haven't yet uh, started any technical investigation how much uh, effort we need to spend to bring it here maybe so in future maybe in future maybe in future yeah but it it, it, it looks promising one of the main uh, difference between cinema 4d and blender is uh, actually in price so okay Cinema yes. 4D is not a free product. Free, free product. So yes. One of the big uh, reasons for us uh, to go into Blender was that uh, it's uh, first of all it's modern mm -hmm. and it's free. Free, exactly. And, uh, and people like free. That, and that's why, yeah, that, that's why there are a lot of uh, people because we uh, really f felt like a bit. Mm, um, limited mm -hmm. due to uh, price of nuke and uh, not any studio can afford it uh, and that's why we decided to uh, release uh, on some free host platform okay nice so uh, like as in uh, like product manager and all so is there any target in future to uh, like target audiences like Indian audiences is there any uh, like future plans for any targeted like uh, King Tools will be launch something big for specifically Indian audience because trust me in like uh, as an Indian I just want to tell you that in India King Tools have a big, a big uh, like massive number of subscribers they are uh, trying they want to use King Tools they are actually uh, like uh, finding like 15 days trial 30 days trials they were they said me sir give me a product key so that we can use they're they're exactly mad for King Tools specifically the, your uh, face tracker in fact I am also a fan of face tracker uh, not like geo tracker is good enough like this is not normal geometry track but the face tracker when I use when I saw the results I, I have a tutorial uh, with uh, Tony Stark character he was fa moving his face and when I tracked that for the very first time I just bl blown up so I thought key uh, is, is there any f future plans to hit Indian audience with a big number of surprises you uh, uh, well uh, we we started looking into uh, like Asian market, the whole Asian market, like uh, maybe a couple of years ago. But it's a different market for us. Uh, and uh, the culture, uh, there are some like cultural things that we need to uh, kind of. We need to find uh, place how like uh, things how to 
how to understand this market, how to work well in there, what people need, what people use, what people like, and how they work. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we are currently working on like expanding to the Asian market and India as well, because it's perhaps one of the largest markets in there. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, actually we have some plans on India as well. But uh, yeah, we we and in terms of like surprises, there are surprises, so I can talk about them. Yeah, uh, they exactly. they start not being surprises when you tell them like yeah. uh, before before they happen. Uh, but yeah, uh, but of course uh, we. Uh, honestly speaking, there are quite a lot of uh, other surprises in our life right now, uh, and uh, all this uh, all this COVID thing is kind of surprise for us. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think more surprises are waiting in future. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we are looking into Asian market, and we are, uh, we are looking how we can come there and make some big things in there. Okay. So any any big plans in future for Kin Tools? Like uh, anything new launch, new new product for uh, like Kin Tools add-ons, anything? Any plans? Well, we are working on some like machine learning stuff that we are going to incorporate like more stuff in there. Like uh, for example, now our tracking is not is not really uh, machine learning. It's kind of machine learning but not but not really. So we are going to improve that perhaps with adding more things like that and tracking. Mm -hmm. We are going to release more products for more platforms. Uh, like for example, Armand mentioned the geo tracker for Blender. And we are working on geo tracker for or maybe face tracker for After Effects. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, maybe some other hosts uh, we, we will add in, add in future. As well, Maya. We are like researching uh, whether we need to re because we have a prototype of face builder for Maya at this point, but we don't understand if uh, if we can make it viable in there. So Actually, we need to do some research. The in the upcoming release, uh, most likely we release something like uh, three new nodes for Nuke, okay. and uh, I. I'm not going to reveal uh, what uh, are these notes about, but uh, they will really help a lot of uh, compu uh, composters all over the world at, and that are dealing not only with tracking, but uh, also on, with some other tasks as well. So that means something something big will be coming. Is this will be coming up end of this year or it will be on next year? Uh, hopefully even earlier. Because currently we are on three or four uh, releases per year scheme, mm -hmm. so we uh, trying to have a release once a quarter. So the upcoming release uh, is going to be in the middle of uh, summer, something like this. Okay, nice. I think this will help to my viewers to more connect with Kin Tools. And I think uh, that will be a very good new new things add-ons for Kin Tools. Okay, my next next uh, question is like uh, in Kin Tools recently I saw a face tracker update that will uh, when you click that option called auto detect or something that will detect your face automatically. So uh, when this comes from because when, then the last update that was not there you have to manually set the faces. In fact, when I do uh, did some faces that was uh, pretty hard to adjust. If I adjust the blend shape for the ears, this area will be distorted. This area will be distorted, and then I have to fix so too many points that will dist uh, entire the output will be uh, the lost so when this idea came from this auto detect and how exactly it will work for is there any specific footage like if the footage will be uh, like a different posture then the auto detect will not work or any other specific things to work that auto detect one well basically it's pretty natural thing given that uh, facial landmarks and facial auto detection is uh, now almost everywhere in every cell phone uh, and so on so it was one of the really uh, awaited feature mm -hmm. um, and uh, the reason why it's important uh, because sometimes when you uh, do not um, when you haven't 
put the right pins uh, and get the overall uh, shape of the face, then you are kind of in, in a kind of infinite loop uh, when you're trying to fix uh, uh, something on one side and then fix on the other side of the face and so on, like you described earlier. And that's uh, actually is solved by this feature when you just put and everything is almost correct and you just need manually bit of, tweak bit of small fix, details. Yeah. 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 And uh, especially it's important for uh, face builder because in face builder uh, it's uh, really easy to um, put some wrong keyframe if you're trying, for example, to uh, match one view precisely and set up many, many, many pins on it and uh, uh, without taking a, in account other views. And then when you open other views, uh, it's appeared that actually the uh, form that you get from one projection is actually off uh, from the actual uh, actor. And that's why you're trying to fix it. And then it's like something like re really tedious process. But now you can open just uh, several views, click this auto detect button on it then drag some pins and do it iteratively and on all pins uh, on all views and it it's much faster much more convenient and we first implemented in uh, of course internally and in just several weeks it appeared that nobody now used uh, this uh, feature internally in, my, in our team mm -hmm. uh, i mean that uh, feature when you just manually put these uh, pins and everybody uses this auto detect button and we understand that yeah it's it was a right feature let's release it publicly anything you want to add here uh no no it's quite okay so going to my <laughs> next question this this is uh, like uh, i i think this is a funny question for viewers because they are don't getting the point that why we why you guys are using on the face tracker is a blend shape not a obj not a FBX, why blend shape? And why GeoTracker is using the FBX? Why this is racism, they said. Probably I, uh, I didn't, uh, I haven't got the question. Uh, like in, in, the, in, in, in the face tracker, in the face tracker, you guys using the blend shape to adjust, right? right. But in the uh, geo tracker, we are using like you can import the FBX one also in the rigged rigged uh, models and all. So wh they said, why not OBJ is using on the face tracker mode? Why we can't use our uh, custom? So I said you can use it via geo tracker, but they said no. We we should uh, that op options to add some OBJ. To, we can import that OBJ face model like any kind of face model. Then we can adjust the point same like face tracker. So why these things are not there? Why blend shape? Uh, I mean that probably, uh, if I understand you correctly, uh, you're asking why uh, it's impossible to load any OBJ yes, exactly. uh, face into face tracker. Correct. And yet the, the problem, the, actually you can load OBJ in face tracker, but it should be, ob, uh, it should be geometry in our topology. Okay. So the same topology that face builder use. Mm -hmm. The reason for it is that um, we should somehow understand what is what uh, uh, in this model. Where is mouse? Where is nose? Where is uh, mm -hmm. where are cheeks and cheeks, so on? Cheeks, ears, yes. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's a problem. So. Uh, for us, topology is kind of a key, like some markup on top of the, in the model. And uh, that's why we can uh, morph it how actual uh, people speak or moves and so on. And uh, so if for some reason you need some uh, custom form, you can export a general mesh from Face Builder then wrap it uh, on top of some, for example, 3D scan and so on, and then load it into face tracker, and it, it will work. 
So that's that's a way how to load some custom mesh interface tree. It's a pretty pretty like a hard process, but it it can work. Yeah. Yeah, it can so, work, and of course we are like looking into ways how to make like any mesh work with our face tracker. Exactly. So, the, but but it's not in not planned for future uh, like for closest releases because it's a it's a difficult thing. Okay, so yeah, uh, we, we, yeah, we we tried several st uh, things for it, but uh, they just didn't work, and that's that's why it, it, it's really not an easy right okay so any recent big projects you worked which is already released that can be possible to announce here because people want to know that which which uh, movies or which big project products uh, kin tools are exactly used for well uh hard to answer the uh, reason for it is that um if you work in VFX company, you know how many exactly. indies, indies uh, yes, yes, yes. they have. That's why I asked and that released uh, movies are if possible or not. If, if uh, for example, in uh, generally in uh, this indies, there is some uh, topic around that what VFX company can share after uh, the movie is released, for example, and so on. But there is nothing about vendors. So exactly. that's why it's really hard to uh, show, for example, some show reel uh, in show reels and so on, because we just don't have this information and uh, breakdowns and so on. But uh, the thing that I can share that uh, almost uh, in top uh, twenty studios, VFX studios in the world, uh, nineteen use our tools. Any Indian so companies? Uh, in, including uh, Indian companies as well, yeah. Okay, so nice. uh, I, don't, I don't have statistics for the Indian market uh, specifically, but, but uh, uh, among top studios, yes. Okay. So, uh, and uh, it means that I, I know quite a lot of different uh, films, for example, and um, almost every Mar Marvel uh, film or some. Uh, Lots of stuff was done in uh, Games of Thrones and quite a lot of almost any film uh, use it, but not often we know about it. Just yes, yes, yes. Here's something. I can understand. Uh, but yeah, I I, I can uh, got this kind of weird weird questions, but uh, it's hard to answer because as you said that you if you run from VFX industry, you have a lot of Indians and all. So sometimes. Uh, as per demands, I have to ask those silly questions. But uh, for th this types of answer, they should uh, know that what is VFX exactly? What is NDA? What are the restrictions we have? We, some things we have to speak, some things we don't have to speak. So these are good things to uh, learn from you guys. Uh, just uh, stop right now. So last question from my side, because I have already ended everything. Uh, this is completely different, but uh, depends on this pandemic situation. What do you guys, uh, both are guys, are thinking about like f future VFX industry will be going? Because right now, so many guys are jobless and very new fresh artists are uh, waiting for new jobs so is there any opportunities like big opportunities will be coming up in few uh, years or in few months after covid end because they are completely puzzled uh, they're just they're th thinking uh, messaging me that sir is there any new openings when vfx will industry will be come back to normal so what guys you are thinking about this when it will be normal I guess no one knows. No one knows. <laughs> but, but what no about the knows. VFX industry? Well, I hope that... Uh, well, I, I can look back into history and say that after any such crisis, usually there is a kind of renaissance. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why uh, I'm pretty optimistic about it. Uh, looking at, for example, our, our statistics, I see that uh, VFX industry is almost back to normal not 100 percent but like 70 percent probably or something like this and it's uh, pretty it means that we already used uh, used to um, the situation and we understand how to walk uh, under the pressure of uh, lockdown and so on at the same time, uh, I believe that lots of uh, beautiful 
um, technical decisions and solutions uh, actually appeared due to pandemic. Uh, I hope that more and more everything will go to cloud and uh, it won't be local, it will, will be more distributed. And that means that uh, more people can uh, be included into the process. And even if you work from home or from your isolated island in uh, Indian Ocean, you can still work uh, on uh, uh, top uh, projects uh, in the world, uh, on top companies and so on. So it means that you can stay uh, where you live uh, with people you love and at the same time uh, make money uh, working on great projects and uh, hopefully it will be a great outcome uh, from all this pandemic situation and uh, uh, at the same time it uh, basically most likely it will be exactly the thing which give the rise of uh, your bulk uh, in uh, the VFX industry so because uh, before uh, now we call it before, before. Uh, people uh, had to um, actually people were in front of really tough choices when you work in uh, VFX you um, usually have to relocate to some uh, area where lots of different studios and studios usually ha um, have uh, strange uh, politics in terms of um, staff. I mean that uh, there were massive uh, layoffs and massive uh, um, hiring and so on and uh, people always rotate uh, switching between studios uh, and so on and so on and i don't feel that it's okay mm -hmm. i i believe that it's something that uh, should be addressed somehow in future because uh, artists uh, don't feel um don't feel the um, protection, I'd say, in, in terms of they, they don't feel that uh, job security, yeah. Everything will, uh, uh, job security. Uh, yeah, they don't feel uh, that everything will be okay in future. Uh, everything was pretty uncertain. And uh, everything is pretty uncertain right now as well, even probably more uncertain. But uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty optimistic about it. I, I think that uh, Good times are coming. Exactly. Anything you want to add here, Arjun? Uh, no, I don't think I have anything to add here. Even when I was thinking about these same things, my my company was uh, lay off me. So I, when I saw uh, watch back my few like months back, I thought like, what happened to entire the world? So I wish that everything will get back to normal and we will go outside without mask and all. So let's see. <laughs> okay. So I am done from my side. And apart from anything you want to add here for our India and my VFX World channel, anything you want to say? Well, uh, I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to ask some questions about the situation in India. So, uh, go ahead. Uh, because uh, uh, people uh, speak uh, quite a lot about uh, situation with COVID in India and I wonder uh, how it affects uh, VFX. So what's going on uh, in VFX field now? Uh, I guess there's no sh uh, shooting at all. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, right now we have three industries here, Bollywood, Tollywood and Hollywood guys are like outsourcing here from India. So Hollywood projects are coming up because on Hollywood, the shooting's uh, starting and it's going almost normal. As you said, 70% is normal. But in Bollywood movies, are it was uh, resumed a few months back. Suddenly, it stopped here again. So everything in my area right now, partial lockdown. And Saturday, Sunday, completely lockdown. So the main area is for VFX in India is Maharashtra. It's called as Mumbai. And the Bangalore, these two, and Hyderabad. These three areas are based of VFX industry. MPC is in Bangalore. 
and method everything is in pune maharashtra so the main areas are completely affected by covid 19 so that's the main issue that we guys are uh, lost our jobs on september on mid of november and all but right now it's getting back normal but uh, it's very slow because based on the covid 19 which is the second strain in fact uh, some guys are thinking about the third strain will be coming up soon so people are very scared actually but vaccination is uh, going on let's see hope for the best but vfx industry it's uh, not too good but it's it's starting to coming back normal day by day let's see but based on because let's see the bollywood companies like those are companies are working for only bollywood projects they have really affected and right now they are uh, working with some outsourced projects like some uh, like japanese movies and all like korean movies uh, they have their projects frame store kind of companies so apart from that companies many small companies in fact some companies completely shut down but uh, hope for the best then let's see this is the scenario here and uh, another question i have uh, how people learn vfx in india are there any universities or everybody learn it just online somehow or how, yeah, yeah. how it works exactly uh, just like uh, my example i learned uh, from my academy of advanced cinematic that is short form called mac and one is called arena these are the two institute big institute in india all over the indias they are providing vfx knowledge vfx they is called vfx institute they are give providing degrees and apart from that we have two big college pune pune in pune maharashtra we have pune film institute and one is in bangalore so they guys are not providing complete vfx they are providing cinematography photography multiple stuffs in called like complete multimedia these are the things but uh, in in india like right now situations most of the guys are exactly watching focusing on youtube and uh, sometimes they are uh, purchasing some online courses from an academy udemy skill shares and all to those who guys are really interested for vfx they are going for the paid classes but uh, most of the guys are looking for free classes which is in youtube and uh, they said to me that sir you provide a lot of tutorials free tutorials sir so please provide more we want to learn vfx because we don't have much that much uh, money uh, like uh, so to learn with from institute because that is very pretty high amount because after the covid 19 they increase is the amounts and all so most of the guys are uh, due to amount higher amount they don't have uh, to go to institute so my targeted audience is exactly them those who guys don't have money to go outside and learn vfx so uh, when i started vfx world my target is like like to focus on that specific students they are really want to know vfx so that's why i named this channel as vfx world so come and join this community and learn vfx with uh, just a free of cost and all and what i'm providing from last years they are also happy and after watching this kind of podcast they are getting motivated so that's why i did this kind of podcast with uh, all of you recently i'd done some podcast with ignes alia you know about him he's a great guy and some other industry level experts so when they watched your videos your interviews they said yes vfx is something because sometimes uh, people told me that sir is there any future on vfx is there anything we can do in after learning vfx how much the salary will be these are the questions will be coming up because uh, they said that uh, my parents will not allow me to learn vfx then i said watch these videos you guys are legends so they they are here right now uh, so after getting so much uh, like decisions and all so you should learn vfx after learning then you can decide that you can work with this or not <laughs> so these are the things they learn lot of other areas like youtube online facebook instagram they are just want to learn that's it i got it i got it yeah that's basically the same like uh, for example here in russia uh, just just a few universities uh, some paid courses and a lots of youtube content so if you want to learn uh, you can do it and exactly. uh, In India, the major problem is uh, few artists, very few artists know about the Houdini software. So, in Houdini, demand is in India right now is currently is very high, but uh, they don't have any good artists to learn. In in this industry also, those who can really know about Houdini, they working few years in India, then they go outside of India, then they fixed over there. So that's the main issue of Houdini. Some FX artists are not uh, here in India. Some good sculpting artists are not. They are here, but major problem is all about the Houdini. In fact. 
fact, when I started my Houdini courses, I, I learned Houdini and uh, I R&D and all, and then I created some tutorials. So I don't know Houdini in details, but I know a little bit of. So then they said in comment box, sir, please give us some Houdini tutorials. So these are the few things in India they really want to learn. But the like hungerness to learn, that is very uh, like uh, high in India. As is this one, I really appreciate that. I absolutely agree that Houdini is one of the best platforms and best uh, software pieces of software that is currently available for the FX artists. We are also thinking about adding our tool to Houdini because uh, there is a big demand for it here and at the same time quite a lot of uh, applications for it. Like when you track something, you can easily add some more effects on top of it and so on. So, yeah, I, I personally, I really like Houdini uh, because it's, uh, it's modern. It's, uh, they have great support. Exactly. It's just amazing support. Amazing. Just just probably the best support I ever seen in uh, VFX. You write them and they answer like in less than an hour. And it's uh, just something outstanding you know, on the market. The uh, main problem yeah. of the Houdini is they are giving updates very fast. And then each and every <laughs> updates are completely different than the previous version. So that's why the people said that, sir, right now I learned this software and the update is completely different. So which software should I learn, this update or that update? So I said, Ki, okay, uh, learn the newer one. And they said, that, sir, the new one, one again, it will come later a few months. So I said, again, you have to learn that also. <laughs> so do you yeah, have anything the, uh, you want to add here? There is also, always a problem with updates for us as well, because sometimes we want to uh, bring a new update, but we understand that uh, potentially it can break some uh, something in, uh, for our users. That's mm -hmm. why we are trying to release uh, updates with some breaking compatibility exactly. with a previous version. Uh, as rare as it's possible. And it's not easy uh, to do it because sometimes you want to improve something, but it will break something. And that's always a trade-off. Great. Anything you want to add here? Uh, yeah, I just want to add here that we really care about backwards compatibility. So usually when, even when we bring some new stuff that breaks some old stuff, we made it, make it all like uh, working for old scripts in Nuke or old projects in Blender, so you can still open them and extract the results. Maybe you can change them, but uh, you will still be able to see the results and work with them. I don't know how it works in Houdini, but yeah, there, at some point I started learning Houdini as well because I liked the, I liked the architect, like uh, the node structure mm -hmm. of this platform. Uh, but then, yeah, I was also like a little bit put off by the uh, like kind of uh, stuck with the, with, the, with some update that being a little bit too much different from the other ones. And all the tutorials I could find were like for the very early versions, so they were like a little bit different. But yeah, I, I guess uh, it's not a big problem because usually the concepts are the same. They just change icons and stuff like that. And, uh, it, yeah. I, I wish one day I, I want to see Kin tools inside of Houdini also as a plugin. I wish. It will be we, 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 we kind of... Uh, uh, Kind of, uh, that, that was our kind of a decision to not make another platform uh, because all platforms are, are so different. We, like, like a, as a joke uh, with some guys at FMX conference, we decided to uh, found a, a kind of a shortcut committee to uh, to tell everyone in the basics world how to make shortcuts and what, which case should should be in shortcuts so at least that would be like fixed amongst among all problems uh, programs uh, but but yeah the, the software is so like uh like when you work in blender you can barely like you, you you will feel scared going to maya and vice versa uh and they do the same 
like the same thing, like modeling here, modeling there, animation here, animation there, but yeah, so different think. ways. It's it's crazy. So yeah, I, I guess we have something to improve in Limited software. We uh, what? Limited softwares, but big number of uh, like updates and all with good good amount of. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean the differences, like the workflow difference. Okay, 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 okay. I get it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it is the reason that we don't want to make our own host because we'll just bring another workflow uh, that is going to be different from all others. Even if we decide we will take all best things from every software that exists, it was possibly a new workflow. So we decided to, at, at least now, we want to make plugins that will feel native in their hosts. One of the uh, main reasons why uh, we don't want to have a standalone, I just can't decide which uh, scheme to use for manipulating 3D space. I don't. Uh, I, I know like ten different ways uh, how to rotate uh, 3D space in different software, uh, because every software decided to ma make uh, something special for it. Somewhere you need to press control. Somewhere Some old you control, have yes. Old control and so on. And I just don't want the next one in this row uh, to to learn the. Allowance one, so yep, yeah, I just uh, so that's why we decided to create plugins uh, to help the actual users of the actual zoo of this uh, VFX uh, soft. Great, great. So thank you so very much for joining this podcast. I hope you guys also uh, uh, enjoyed this one a lot. So Definitely. Roman and Tron, anything you want to say for my viewers, my VFX World channel, then you can go for it uh, I think we have something uh, we are open to any kind of discussion and okay. um, not only we as a pin tools I say that almost any software developers software vendors are keen on uh, any feedback because this feedback is something that uh, makes us uh, motivated and uh, to improve our tools so please don't hesitate to write us. You don't have license. You uh, pirate it in from uh, Persa, It's not a problem. Write us and exactly. ask uh, your questions. We are open to it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no issues. <laughs> so thank you so very much. And uh, hopefully in future, Kintools will launch so many other stuff also. And hopefully in my tutorials also uh, published on in your platform to free sharing and all. So I, I wish that that will a big, big opportunity for me also that you guys uh, will love my tutorials and all. So thank you so very much, Roman and Antoine, to join this podcast. And guys, if you really thank love you. this video, Love these videos, podcasts, and subscribe to VFX World. And also follow them. Link is in description below. Their Instagram IDs and Facebook IDs, all details. And as Roman said, if you have any queries, please don't hesitate. Just go and ask them. Don't pirate, don't download from CG Peers. If you have anything, then go for it and ask them. Thank you a lot. Exactly. Thank you for having us. Thank you so very much. Bye bye. And good night from Bye. India. Bye.